Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the 17 C notes on uh, the rectangular hyperbola. Okay, uh, at the end of this, you should be able to say I can find x-intercepts, y-intercepts, asymptotes, and graph rectangular hyperbolas. All right, so first thing we're going to do is actually look at the graphing program. And we're going to take a look at um, a bunch of different rectangular hyperbolas. All right. So um, first one we're going to look at is f of x or y equals 2 over x. So that gives this crazy looking graph here. OK, um, now the number on the top is 2 and it's over x. It's fairly important to note that there's a point on there that's 1, 2. And also there's another point that is at 2, 1. Also negative 1, negative 2 and negative 2, negative 1 are also points on there. All right, here's 3 over x. And surprisingly enough, 1, 3 shows up, and so does 3, 1 is a nice point on those graphs. And same with negative 1, negative 3, negative 3, negative 1. Um, hopefully, at this point here, you're starting to realize, oh, hey, wait, it's going to be um, two numbers that multiply together. Let's go back to just the 2 over x. Two numbers that multiply together to give the top number, which is 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 4 times a half is 2, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, so forth and so on. So again, that works with 3, 4 works with all of them. So here is 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1, all of those multiply together to get 4. So on 6 over x, it's going to be again in the two numbers that multiply together to get six so this here it looks like one and a half and four um, there is one and six two and three so forth and so on it works for ten works for all of these all right now um, a little bit different now we have negative two over x so take a second to stop and think what's gonna happen since now it's negative two over x Okay. It's still going to be two numbers that multiply together to get negative 2. So if you think about it, if it's 1, it's got to be multiplied by negative 2. And 2 by negative 1. So the hyperbola, hyperbolas are going to be in here. All right, so look, there they are. Now they're in these two quadrants here. All right, and then same with negative 4 over x, negative 10 over x. Okay, so again, look, there's negative 5, positive 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. All right? All right, let's get rid of all of those. And then now we're going to look at 4 over x minus 2. Okay, so I put that on there, 4 over x minus 2. Now, look, it's, it's really the 4 over x graph, which is the green graph, just shifted to the right guess what one two spots to the right one two spots to the right one two spots to the right so the whole thing is shifted over two to the right so again here's the one we're doing right here four divided by x minus two so um, I like to think of it as what do I put in for x so that I get zero two minus positive two minus two so that's gonna shift the whole graph to the right two all right um, now we're gonna take a look and see what the graph does with 4 divided by x and then at the end plus 3 so hopefully you figured out from that the whole graph is graph is going to shift up 3 okay so again here's 4 over x oops they're both green yeah that's all right this these two green ones here are the original 4 over x these are the new ones so the whole graph went up 1 2 3 spots so every point on that graph went up 3 spots Okay, now we're going to combine them together. 4 divided by x minus 2 and add 3 at the end. So there's our 4 divided by x minus 2 and then add 3 to the end. So hopefully the whole graph should go to the right 2 and up 3. All right, so there it is. <clears throat> Again, here's regular 4 over x. So here's a nice spot here. So, <coughs> excuse me, goes to the right 1, 2 and then up 1, 2, 3. Right for any point there to the right, one, two, and then up one, two, three. Works for all of those. All right, 
and then try to picture what negative 6 divided by x plus 4 all minus 1 looks like. Okay, so pause it, take a look, see what you think, and then unpause it, and here's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, whole graph goes down 1, right? So it's really, it's the negative 6 graph, which I don't have on here. That's all right. Um, here, let's just change this one. Okay, and here's negative 6. So that whole graph should go down 1 and then to the left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and there it is, a nice little spot. All right, so that's what rectangular um, hyperbola look like. All right, let's take a look at some examples. So I'm now going to give you... Um, a couple of graphs and you've got to figure out what the equation is so again push pause and then start it back up once you think you've got the equation figured out okay so really all we want to do is we just want to look for um, some nice points on here so there's a nice point right there at 2 3 so 2 oops can't read that so for this one here 2 times 3 is 6 so this is gonna be it's, it hasn't shifted up or down anywhere everything's right from the middle here so it's going to be y equals 6 over x right because you also go 3 2 you can go 6 1 1 6 negative 1 negative 6 so forth and so on all right so this one here find a nice little point here and that would be this right here so that's set to negative 2 so 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4 so it's going to be y equals negative 4 over x all right so they're not so bad when they haven't been shifted at all from the from the middle but you know they're doable as well once they've been shifted away from the middle with vertical and horizontal shifting but um, we'll take a look at those in a little bit all right all right um, for the function y equals 6 over x minus 2 all plus 4 so asymptotes let's go back and look at asymptotes in fact let's leave this one up here and let's look at asymptotes on say this one here you know what? let's look at a simple one 2 over x asymptote remember is a line where the graph that the graph will never cross so there's an as asymptote at right here where x equals 0 and there's also an asymptote right here at y equals 0 okay so taking that off and looking at the one that had both a uh, vertical shift and a horizontal shift the asymptote here on this one is going to be here here our horizontal shift sorry vertical shift was 3 so we're going to have an asymptote here at 3 at y equals 3 and then we're also going to be we have we put in 2 for x because 2 minus 2 gives us 0. So there's also going to be an asymptote at x equals 2. Okay, so those are going to be the two asymptotes. So with that in mind, let's go back and figure this one out. Vertical asymptote. So that's the one that goes up and down. That one crosses through the x-axis. So we're going to want to look here at what we need, what x needs to be so that this is 0. So the vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 2 okay and we know that's gonna be true because there's no way that in this equation x could ever equal 2 because 2 minus 2 is 0 and you end up dividing 6 by 0 and we know we can't do that so we know that this graph here will never be at um, x will never be able to equal 2 okay so there's your vertical asymptote horizontal asymptote is this one here that's the one that crosses through the y-axis and that is going to be this one here right so y equals whatever the vertical shift is so y equals 4 there's your horizontal asymptote okay um, x intercept okay so x intercept that's when it's that's when the whoa that's not what I wanted um, that's when this graph here is going to um, cross the x-axis so when it crosses the x-axis y equals 0 so what we're gonna want to do here is set this whole equation here 
and we're going to set y equal to 0. So we have y, oh, all right, Oops, sorry. So we've got y equals 6 over x minus 2 plus 4. But again, we know that y, since we're looking for the x-intercept, y equals 0. So 0 equals 6 over x minus 2 plus 4. Now we're just going to solve this thing for x. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Negative 4 equals 6 over x minus 2. All right, so let's just do this. Put, put them over 1, and we'll do cross products. That's a big mess, but it's 6 times 1. And then we also have negative 4 times x minus 2. So we get 6 equals negative 4x plus 8. So let's subtract 8 from both sides, and we get negative 2 equals negative 4x. Divide by negative 4, and x equals a half. So the x-intercept is x equals 1 half. Okay. Um, y-intercept is when the y, sorry, when the, it crosses the y-axis, that's when x equals 0. This one's actually a little bit nicer. So we got y equals 6 over x minus 2 plus 4. So it's really y equals 6 over 0 minus 2 plus 4. So y equals 6 over negative 2, which is negative 3 plus 4. So the y-intercept is 1. All right, and then sketch a graph of the function. So let's let me just quickly do that, and then away we go. All right, so let's start with our vertical asymptote, x equals 2. So that's going to be right along this line here. All right. And actually, these asymptotes are going to help us um, graph this thing and make it a little bit easier. Um, the y asymptote's at 4. So now you also have another asymptote here at 4. And so now picture this here as the new center of the, the axis. All right. So, um, so really from that, what we can do is say, okay, it just let's just picture this as 6 over x. So really now the points are going to be start saying this is 0, 0. We want points that are going to be um, at, uh, that multiply together to get 6. So that would be 2 and 3, and also 3 and 2, also negative 2 and negative 3, and negative 3 and negative 2. So our graph is going to look something-ish like that. And like that there. And let's see. Let's see how well we did on our intercept. So look, there's our x-intercept at 1 half, y-intercept at 1. And we sketched a graph. All right. So um, we will hit the second half of this, uh, the 17C notes here. Um, so look for part two of this. All right. Thanks.